Good morning. Welcome back to BT on a Thursday morning. You know, one thing we haven't talked about yet in biz uh, on breakfast television so far this year is real estate. So we're five days in and I think we're overdue. Mike Apple, City News 680 joins us now. OK, what can we look forward to in the year ahead with real estate? Oh, we're going to keep talking about it for another year, aren't we? Well, that's right, because uh, and good morning, uh, by the way. Good morning, um, Melissa. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, look, a year ago at this time, we were thinking that uh, the real estate market had nowhere to go but up. At least yeah. that was certainly the trajectory for prices and sales. The year started very well. And then uh, the Bank of Canada kind of turned the table with uh, the start of aggressively raising borrowing costs. Was it and seven times has, they raised the yep, interest seven rate? Seven times. Seven times and uh, more than 4%. And that has uh, dramatically shifted the psychology and the momentum of the market. Uh, the December real estate sales results in from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board this morning indicated uh, just 3,100 transactions last month. That was down 48% compared to the previous December. And the average selling price is just over a million dollars, which is still expensive. But uh, you look at the uh, trajectory and trends for prices, the million dollar price point in December was down 19 percent from the March wow. record high. We, it was it was amazing how as soon as the, the Bank of Canada started raising interest rates, that just tipped everything over the other direction uh, for the year. Prices down about nine percent. And look. This is all about an adjustment in both psychology and just the cost, the monthly carrying costs for borrowers. And until we get a, a clear signal from the Bank of Canada that they're done raising interest rates and we can adjust to the new pricing structure, that's when you're going to see the market bottom out or stabilize at least. Right now it's stagnant. I'm it's, wondering, it's, Mike, though, you, you know, know, buyers and sellers are just waiting around to see what's next. We start the year with these predictions of where the real estate state market is mm. going to go, and it seems like it's wrong, like really <laughs> wrong every year. Fearless, so, fearless forecast, yes. So if like, it, that might be the case this time around, that it looks like it's going to be another awful year and maybe it'll be the opposite. Is that a possibility? It'll, it'll probably see, this is my own guesstimate, Okay. Next few months, we're going to continue to see the slowdown. Yeah. And again, once we hear from the Bank of Canada that they're done raising interest rates, yeah. then you can re make a calculation, uh, you know, how how the borrowing costs and the monthly carrying costs of any property correlates to the actual price. And, and, and don't kid yourself. Look, the Canadian population base is growing. People right. need places to live. There is money coming in. It's going to find an equilibrium. And that's when we're going to see things uh, stabilize. Right. The demand will return. It's just kind of waiting. And right that now. uncertainty, certainly, like it's hard to make that's a right. decision when you don't know what's going to go on. Uh, all right. What's that's happening right. with the jo job market right now? We've got to pay for that house somehow. That's right. Um, and we're continuing to hear about uh, tech sector right sizing, if you will. Look, the tech sector was uh, the place to find a job over the past couple of years. And now these uh, tech heavyweights are reducing their workforce because maybe they overhired and they're planning for an economic slowdown. So Amazon, which was already on the record saying it was going to be reducing its workforce this year, has expanded its uh, plan and giving us a number to 18,000 jobs. Now, for a company Amazon's size, that's 1% of the workforce. Salesforce is a, a massive company in cloud computing mm -hmm. and automation software. It's cutting 10% of its workforce, which is 7,000 jobs. So that's uh, more significant just on a percentage basis. But it's a trend. Other sectors, look, we've still got a lot of job openings. There are, you know, still some labor and skills shortages. Uh, you know, certain companies are going to be cutting back. Others are hiring. So it's, you know, I, the job market has yet to show the effects of an economic slowdown. That might come, but uh, it's not really showing up quite yet. And what's happening with oil and gas right now? We're yeah. going to touch all of the hot topics today. Real estate, jobs, oil and gas. What's going on there? Price for gas came down overnight, four cents, and we're expecting another five cent to drop at midnight tonight. So if you can hold off on that, uh, fill it up tomorrow. Uh, diesel prices are also set to come down. Those have been stubborn, stubbornly high. And Melissa, mm -hmm. when we're talking about transportation costs. Diesel is a key contributor. Big trucks run on diesel, of course. Um, diesel prices could drop over 10 cents at uh, midnight tonight. So watch for that. Uh, this is all correlated to a price for oil, which is dropped by 9% the first two trading days of the year. Again, economics, global supply demand metrics, all of these things 
in the works. Longer term, we're still expecting the price for gas to go up. But uh, in the short term, we'll take it. It's getting a little bit cheaper. Incidentally, no market fallout yet uh, from a stock equation side of things to the goings on in Washington. They can't seem to find a sp or vote on <laughs> and confirm a speaker for the House of uh, Congress. Uh, that, that's the, uh, the soap opera, the drama going on there. I did, though, see yesterday the Canadian dollar uh, spike. A lot of the currencies are starting to move up on this mm. because if they can't find a speaker, they can't pass legislation, and the U.S. could be facing a debt default situation if they can't get a budget bill through the House of Congress. And, you know, that's really interesting information, too, to pass along, too, why this is such a big deal, why everyone's yeah. watching this in the U.S. When they pick things up again today at noon, people are going to be watching. <laughs> Indeed. It's, it's political intrigue, but it does have economic implications. Thanks so much for that, Mike. Nice seeing you this morning. Thank you.